Hello and welcome to the Upper Tees. It's one of the hottest days of the year. It's July. It's somewhere around 30 Celsius in the cities. And the days like this, bright, hot days, generally aren't the best days for river fly fishing. And one of the reasons I've come to this particular stretch of river is that it still allows me to have fantastic sport despite the conditions, hot and bright, and I'm pocket water. Today I'm going to be demonstrating pocket water dry fly fishing. To do this, I've got a nice slice out, nice light outfit, because the fish here are generally quite small. Uh, a pound fish here is a real specimen, and they're, they're few and far between. Most of the fish are very small, very wild, and they live behind these rocks in the current seams, and I'll be trying to present a dry fly upstream on a short line. And to help that, I'll be using a furled leader available from onstreamguide.com. And I'll be lining and keeping as much fly line off the surface of the water as possible because this prevents drag. And I'll be searching for the current seams, looking where I think fish will be hiding, and they will hit the fly fast. You'll see me miss many, many fish today. In this type of environment, the fish are literally like lightning. So, but it's fantastic sport, and one of the reasons I'm in these upper reaches, and I do guide on this stretch, by the way, if you're interested in being guiding on this fantastic water, this is pocket water all the way, as you can see, rocks and pockets, uh, but it contains a, a, an incredible number of trout, and it's great fishing, and as I say, most rivers in these conditions further down will be very dour, but up here we can still get great sport and that's the reason we're here today. So let's see what we can do, pocket water dry fly fishing. And this is the type of water I'm really looking for um, when I'm pocket water fishing. Nice rocks in front of me, the current not too fast, nice breaks behind these rocks. Um, and there's likely to be fish behind each one of these rocks and first I'm going to target the inside line, by wading up the centre of the river, I can get a good angle to cast, to cover most water effectively. And I'm first going to cover the inside line, over near the rock in the water there, it looks to me as that's the sort of area where fish are going to lie, just off the main current seam, you can see a big current lip coming in there, and just off that current seam is where there's likely to be a trout. Going to try and land the dry fly just in that area in the hot zone and hopefully the fish will oblige. So I'll land the fly there right now. And this is how, what this type of fishing is all about targeted dry fly fishing looking for areas that will hold fish. It's important that you cover the water. Oh, and there was a fish. It took the fly just as I lifted it. A little bit. Oh, there we go. Oh, and he's off. So right where I thought there'd be a fish, next to that rock, there was a fish there. Small fish took the fly, and I missed him. how fast the sport can be. Beautiful little fish, of course, all wild fishing, so nothing big, but absolutely phenomenal, enjoyable sport with these pristine, absolutely gorgeous little wild brown trout. And it's all about pocket water dry fly fishing, short line, keeping control. You saw that fish straight in front of the camera. Fantastic fishing one or two more fish up here and I have had a fish about a pound earlier on so there's always a chance of a big fish 
mixed amongst these small fish, but it's all about sport and nothing is better than this pocket water dry fly, fish, dry fly fishing on a hot summer, a hot July day, temperatures in the cities of 30 Celsius and up here, nice cool 18 to 20 Celsius and fantastic fishing. So let's continue right now. The lovely pocket water trout there. Beautiful pocket water fish. Absolutely tremendous.
Yes, nice fish Nelly, well angled, and this is Nelly using the pocket, pocket water dry fly fishing to good effect here, beautiful wild fish there. Well done Nelly, so Nelly's just been caught emulating what I've been doing earlier, keeping control of the dry fly on a relatively short line and she's rewarded with a pretty trout very quickly, nice pretty wild brown trout and off it goes, fantastic fishing. And one, one good method when you're fishing these pocket waters is to use a duo which is a nymph suspended up on a dry fly and if you're very lucky, as whoops, there goes one, as you've just seen, I've caught two fish simultaneously, one on the dry fly and one on the nymph. Two fish at once, it's what we call a double up. So this pocket water fishing can be spectacular and great fun. Well, it's been an absolutely fabulous day up here on the Tees. As you've seen, many fish caught on camera and many, many more caught off camera. And today was uh, a day where specifically I was fishing pocket water dry flies and I was using uh, pale water, which is now very, very battered, as you can see. This fly has landed today. Upwards of 40, maybe 50 fish, and it's still going strong. It's a fabulous pattern, it's called a pale water. It's available from the OnStream Guide website. Match the hatch, pale watery, fantastic fly, size 15, great for pocket water. Use a slightly bigger fly in pocket water, it drags them up. And that's not the only technique we've been using today. I've been fishing with my wife Nelly, and as you've seen, she's managed to catch fish on dry fly. She's enjoyed herself immensely. I've also using, been using and catching many fish on the duo. And the dry fly is my version, what I call Altroth's Life Jacket Caddis. It has some extra flotation qualities in there, but it's basically Altroth's fantastic famous pattern. And about 18 inches of depth. And then I've got a size 16. Black Magic Nymph, again this is very well chewed, it's had many fish today, uh, barely recognisable from the fly that first went on, and so it's done its job, it's landed many fish, size 16 Black Magic Nymph, and the reason black flies work so well in these types of environments is that the fish are very used to seeing terrestrial flies, the occasional caddis, the occasional upright, 
but mainly terrestrial flies. So anything black tends to work a little bit better than say the generic hare's ear or pheasant tail nymph patterns. So black is a good, and the black magic nymph is a, a nymph I devised, is superb for these types of environments. Indeed, I've just met another angler, Peter Sinclair, and he too was using the duo and the black magic nymph on the point, and he caught many, many fish. So it's been a fantastic day up here on the Upper Tees, and we've had great sport despite the dour conditions. And if you'd like to be guided on the Tees, I am available for guiding, so just get in touch via the onstreamguide.com website, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it today as much as we have, and bye for now.